rolling up or folding garments when you're praying. So you find that some people rolls up its, its sleeves and then he comes to the salah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma mentions that this is also an authentic narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He mentioned never to do this in the prayer. Don't ever fold your garments when it comes to the salas. Hadith in Bukhari in Muslim. And Imam al Nawawi rahimahullah also mentions an ijma' on this that there is a ijma' amongst the ulama for the person who folds the thawb or folds the sleeve or anything similar to it in the prayer. The next one that is mentioned is exposing the shoulders. This is the next error when it comes to the salah. Again, the Prophet ﷺ mentions that none of you, nobody should pray with just one garment. لَيْسَ عَلَىٰ عَاتِقِهِ مِنْهُ شَيْءٍ Nobody should use a garment that doesn't cover the shoulders. So that go, your shoulders is considered part of your awrah in the salah itself. So the shoulders should have something to cover them. Again, this goes against now those who wear like the tank top or the jerseys or the vest and you can pray with them. The author does mention here that this hadith is not a prohibition, but rather it is a dislikeness to this. In other words, when the Prophet is saying that none of you should pray unless you have a garment that reaches your shoulders, in other words, it's disliked for you to expose those shoulders. So the salah technically is still valid, but again goes against the perfection of the salah. And remember, whenever we say something goes against the perfection of the salah, in other words, you're losing reward in the prayer. And another error, is praying with pictures on your garment. The Prophet ﷺ, once he stood up for prayer. So he was praying and on his garment, there was an a'lam. An a'lam is literally like a symbol or a sign or just a mark. So it's not necessarily a picture itself. So when the Prophet ﷺ finished his prayer, he took the garment and he gave it to one of the companions and he says, take this garment to Abi Jahm ibn Hudayfa radiallahu an and tell him that I don't ever want to use it again in my salah. And then he mentions that the reason is for verily it distracts me in my prayer. And then the Prophet ﷺ continues, and he requested a garment or a cover that was thick and that there were no symbols or anything on it. Anas radiallahu an also mentions that Aisha radiallahu anha, she used to have a particular curtain that would separate her home from her neighbor's house. And that curtain had an image on it. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her to remove it. For verily it distracts me whilst I am praying. And one of the most interesting thing is, is that even Bukhari rahimahullah in his sahih, he actually has a chapter that's titled the chapter for the one who prays with a garment that has pictures in it. Is it going to uh, nullify their prayer or not? And according to the majority of the ulama, the salah is still intact, but again, it is incomplete or imperfect in terms of its reward. In addition to that, we're just going to add this because the author mentions it here, yawning during the prayer itself. This is also a disliked act, especially when it comes to the salah. But the general rule is yawning is generally makruh in the sharia. Why? Because it encourages a person to be lazy and to be tired. Now, if a yawn does come in the salah, then the Prophet says, وَأَن يُغَطِّرَ الرَّجُلُ فَاهُ That the man, he should cover his mouth even in the prayer. He should cover his mouth whilst he's in the prayer itself. Again, as part of an akhlaq and as part of an etiquette with the salah itself.